Welcome everybody to another web show. It is a very 90s-tastic web show today. Meg is ready. Um, you may remember a show from the 90s called California Dreams. And today I am lucky enough to be speaking to J. Anthony Frankie who played the very hardcore and very tough but very soft and vulnerable Jake Summers. The show was brilliant, Jake Summers was brilliant, the music was brilliant. Yes, you can buy the CD. Uh, so I won't dilly-dally too much. Ladies and gentlemen, J. Anthony Frankie. Jay Anthony, thank you so much for chatting today. I'm so excited to have you on the web show. Um, California Dreams was one of the biggest shows of the 90s and it's loved by so many today. Um, what was it like, is it like, to be part of something so iconic? Well, I, first of all, like, just just the, the fact that we still have fans 30 years on. Um, we still have people you know, saying, hey, I love what you did, or hey, you made my life better, or hey... You know, and I'm like, I made your what? You know, <laughs> I did what? How? What thing did happen? And and they're like, well, I was going through a rough time and your character really taught me to, you know, love me for who, myself for who I am or whatever it is. Or simply just you made me laugh. That in itself is really cool. And then I keep hearing this like iconic thing. You know, when you're doing something, you never think like, oh, this is going to be a thing or it's, you know, it's, this is going to be iconic. I, you know, I think maybe like once in a blue moon, you hear people say that they're filming something. They're like, Oh crap, we've got, we are going to be, you know, um, I don't know that we ever felt that way, but we, we just knew at the time we were big. It was hard to like go shopping. Other than that, like it was just, it was a, just a good time. It was a, a great time to be alive. It was the early nineties. Life was simpler and people couldn't get a hold of me whenever the hell they wanted. And, you know, I didn't carry around a computer in my pocket and, I had a beaver, actually. Prior to your role as Jake Summers, you had roles on shows such as Married with Children. Too bad, because it was a real good one, too. <laughs> Where were you in your career at that time? Had you given yourself a time frame to achieve certain goals, or were you not putting too much pressure on yourself? Yeah, I feel like you're giving me way too much credit for the age I was at. And um, I, I, <laughs> like I had plans, and I wanted to accomplish things, but I don't think I was capable of making long-term goals. Uh, in fact, I'm certain I was incapable of making long-term goals. Um, I, I tended to uh, view things as, hey, this is just kind of what's happening right now, and this is what I'm doing, and, and we'll see where I'm at tomorrow. So I kind of had no goals per se, other than I don't want to do a regular job, which I'm doing now, and and I was right back then, <laughs> but... Um, um, yeah, I went, just before I got this, um, before I got the iconic role of Jake Summers on the iconic California Dreams, um, I had also gotten the role, I won't say which role, but a role on a movie with John Waters was directing. I called my manager and he said, I've got two calls in and you've got a job on this movie and you've got a job on this show. Problem is you have to pick one. In retrospect, I would have liked to have argued for doing both. But I was just kind of like, oh, I got to pick one. OK. And we were talking about it and it was just like, OK, the path I want to take is the one that, you know, where I'm working next year. And this is a series. And who knows what's going to happen with this movie? You know, I you know, you just don't know. So this is a series. It's possible this could go 10 years. It's possible it could end next year, but it's more than likely it'll go at least another four or five years, which it did, which I'm lucky for. The path after the show was more of a self-preservation path. I had to actually just kind of step away um, just for my own sanity and, and health. It kind of seems these days to be famous is a career goal of its own for kids and teenagers. Um, and you developed this level of fame so quickly and so young. Um, what was that really like? What was it like to be that famous seemingly overnight? It was cool. It was the thing you dreamed of. As a young actor, it was a thing you wanted. Um, it was a thing that you said, hey, when this goes away, I'll know that life is over or whatever. But at the same time, the limitations that are placed on you once that happens, it's palpable. You feel it. You're like, oh, crap, I can't, I can't do this thing anymore. I can't just go here and eat. Uh, I can't I can't go to Magic Mountain or Disneyland. There's there's certain things that you just can't do anymore. I can do that now, but for a, a few years, it, it was really rough. It was awesome. Uh, it, I had arrived. Um, I enjoyed it. At the same time, I was like, 
where does this go from here? I don't know. So what was it like when you found out that you could start going shopping again and go to Disneyland again? Was it sad in a way or was it a bit of a relief? Yeah, it was b both. Um, it was like, oh, this is nice. And at the same time, you're like, oh, oh. And then, you know, it's funny. Um, somebody had remarked, um, it was actually a couple of years ago. Um, we had gone to a restaurant or something and, and a young woman uh, who was the hostess at the restaurant or something was extremely rude to me. Um, and somebody jokingly said, oh, if they only knew that she was, if she only knew, you know, who she was talking to back in the day, or if this had been back in the day, she'd be, and I, and I kind of thought about it. I was like, uh, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's such a weird thing, fame. There's a sadness when it goes. There's a, a, oh, wow, this is awesome when it's there. Honestly, if I was to decide to get back into the business now, um, I would like some sort of like semblance of in, in between just, you know, just I'm, I'm doing my job and, oh, hey, yeah, yeah, I'm having dinner. Thank you. All right. For me, one of the reasons California Dreams stood out from other shows at the time was the actual musical talents of the cast and you were and still are an amazing guitar player. Uh, did you have a chance to talk about your character, Jake, before filming to try and incorporate those talents into the character at all? Well, the character was originally supposed to play guitar. Um, the I, I remember the original script that I was auditioning with said... Uh, oh, I can't sing. I, I, I sound like a screech owl or something like that. Um, and then I sang for the producer, Peter Engel, and I think it was my second audition. He went, oh, he can sing. So, all right, we'll make it so Jake can sing. I had already gotten the part, but then I went into the studio. They wanted to see what my voice sounded like. And basically, I just don't think I sounded poppy enough. But if you listen to Leather and Loose, like that's me singing and playing live. A wet flashy clothes. I ride on a Harley. I don't drive no road. I'm a regular guy who does what he says. What you see is what you get now. I want to be your friend. I do remember that um, Ron Solomon, who wrote the Leather and Loose song, uh, came up to me at the end of it because he had just showed me how to do it real quick and took off. And he came up to me at the end of filming and he said, oh, that was awesome. I didn't think you had it in you. I'm not a brain or a jock or a surfer dude, but I'm a man with a plan and a ride at it. So if you want things done right, I've got the juice. I'm running on the ticket of leather and loose. But then the other stuff is the uh, incredibly uh, talented Barry Coffing doing Jake's voice. You can definitely tell there's a different dude singing um, between some of the other songs in that. And there's other times I've sang too. Brentley also sang on the show live a few times as well. So, um, but um, yeah, they, they talked about it. Uh, it was implemented. I did play guitar here and there. Um, did sing once, twice, three times, I think. cast of California Dreams famously reunited on the Jimmy Fallon show in 2012. It's a great video. Um, what was that like and how did that all happen? I had already uh, come out to Australia and had been living here two years. Um, and then I got a call saying, um, hey, do you want to do a Jimmy Fallon? He's doing a, a California Dreams reunion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the cast of California Dreams. <laughs> I think I jokingly said, what, they couldn't get saved by the bell? And it turned out that was the case. Um, they even brought Mr. Belding, played by Dennis Haskins, um, on to be part of the bit. Dennis, you, 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 weren't, you weren't in California Dreams. Oh, no, no, I was. Don't you remember my catchphrase? Hey, 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 what is going on here? And that was fun. It was good to see everybody. Um, got to see some family while I was there as well. Just flew into New York. First thing I did was I got off the plane, got a huge New York pizza. 
Um, cause pizza here in Australia is different. And then, yeah, we filmed the, the, uh, the bit. Um, and it was a great time. Jimmy Fallon was awesome. Um, it was really good to see everybody. I know you came, you came from Australia. I came out from Australia. Yeah. Very uh, cool. Thanks for coming in for that. My pleasure. I, uh, moved to Australia, married my sweetheart, Tracy, and, uh, just finished filming a pilot, um, that I created and we'll see where that goes. I think I saw Kelly's youngest daughter when she was that big. Um, and she had just had her. Um, so I had witnessed her as a, as a young child. Um, yeah, it was a good time and good to see everybody. Have you seen many of the cast since that reunion? And could we possibly look forward to a 2023 reunion? They did do a, I should say we, but I wasn't there, did do a pop-up uh, Sharky's um, concert slash meet and greet. Um, I couldn't make it. Um, I think it was just the beginning of COVID or, or something. And uh, I talked to Jenny Kwan probably most. She's still very lovely and awesome. And uh, Michael and... and Brentley and William here and there and Aaron. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm in Australia, so. So California Dreams has been such an important part of so many childhoods and teen years, myself included, of course. Um, but what did you watch growing up? What is your California Dreams? Wow, uh, Kung Fu with David Carradine. Um, he, every time he walked into place and they would start like, hey boy, what you doing? We're gonna kick your ass. He'd just be like, I wish to harm no one. I will stand for you. You know, and it was just, and then he'd just be whooping everybody's ass. It was like, it was, you know, as a kid, you're like, this is great. I think there was MV3 with uh, Richard Blade, which was basically MTV before MTV. And it was like an hour of music television that you'd race home from school to get to see. And it was just the first music videos, Haircut 100, um, you know, the video killed the radius, the whole, the whole deal. Uh, Silver Spoons was a big deal. Um, that was with that uh, Rick Schroeder. Well, I'm sorry, Ricky Schroeder. Um, and Erin Gray used to have a crush on her when I was a kid. Um, she's still looking great. Um, wow. That's so long ago. I'm a huge fan of mash. Even as a kid, I loved it. I love it as an adult. If it's on, I don't care if it's five minutes left, I'll watch it 30 seconds left. I'll watch it. Um, so yeah, mash was definitely, uh, the big one. Um, it's definitely one of my favorite shows of all times. Um, taxi, um, especially, um, Andy Kaufman's stuff as Latka Gravis. Just, and Jim Ignatowski, who got the, I think it's the longest, still the longest laugh ever in a sitcom uh, doing the um, the DMV skit. I don't know if you've seen that. Lloyd is playing a Reverend Jim and he's in the DMV taking his driver's test and he has to get it because he's a taxi driver. So he has to pass this test and they're all there to help him. And he's cheating. He's like, what do you do? What? Oh, no. He says, what does a yellow light mean? And they're like, slow down. And he's like, what does a yellow? And then they're like, slow down. What does? And it's just this, pro it's, it's like, I don't know, three minutes straight of the audience just losing their freaking minds. Um, anyways, brilliant. What does a yellow light mean? Slow down. Okay. What? <laughs> Light me. Slow down. Okay. Whoa. One of the things I really like about your Instagram is that you were clearly a dog lover. Meg had to come and join and say hello. Um, and you are an advocate for adopting rescue dogs. Why is that important to you? Dogs can speak for themselves if you listen or if you feel it, but too many people don't and can't or won't or whatever it is. So um, because they, so many people will not hear them or, or, or even care. Um, I just feel like it's important to just, the th I think part of it is not just dogs. I think it's like all animals. Um, they all need a voice. Like uh, you just look around the world and we're just, I, if there's a hell for animals, it's here. And we're its stewards. Um, we are the stewards of hell. We are the caretakers of hell for most animals on this planet. Um, we treat them like absolute shit. Um, dogs, it just so happens, look to us for much more than just um, food. Um, so I don't know. I just, I just feel like I have to 
say something. I have to speak up somehow. Um, and um, it's weird. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, do I really want to be putting all this? Like it's depressing stuff. It is depressing. And I don't like, do I really want to put this on my Instagram. Uh, and I talk to my wife about it. And she's like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, and at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to depress people. But at the same time, like I, I have a voice. Um, it's not as loud as it used to be, or I'm sorry, it doesn't come across to as many people as it used to be, but, um, it still comes across a bit. So I use it when I can and how I can. And how many dogs do you have? This is Shirley, by the way. Say hi, Shirley. Yeah. We have the two. Um, but that's also because the most councils in Australia, especially in the suburbs, um, don't allow you to have any more than two without special permission. Um, so we have two. If we could, we'd have more. Um, we do plan on at some point um, moving a little more rurally. And then, um, according to the wife, we're going to have cows and chickens and pigs and do and 50 dogs and all kinds of crap. So um, we'll see how that goes. So what has your life been like since California Dreams ended? Are you enjoying Australia? I walked away from the business. Um, on purpose. Um, I actually just said I, I got to go for a bit because I was, I was young. Um, I partied a lot, like a rock star, basically. It was fun, but at the same time, like I was getting to a point where I was like not stopping. I wasn't finding a a balance between the party life and the regular life. So yeah, I walked away, and then I started working in um, uh, tech, working for a video game uh, development and uh, publishing companies. Did that for a very long time, uh, then met Tracy and moved to Australia in 2008. There's actually an entire day of my life that I lost moving here, um, the 28th of October, 2008. Um, didn't, does not exist for me at all. I got it back when I went back for Jimmy Fallon, and then I lost it again when I came back. And then I went back in 2016 to visit friends and family and do a little like six week or eight week or whatever tour around the States um, and got it back and then came back and lost it again. So unless I move back that day will forever be lost to me as long as I keep coming back here. Um, anyway, so yeah, got here. Um, and then I got a, a job working in video games here again. And now I'm not in video games anymore and I'm working for another uh, tech company doing some other stuff. Um, it's been good. Um, Australia's, a very nice place. Um, I like Vegemite. I do. Yep. Um, it's it's definitely an acquired taste for some people. I get it, but I I like Guinness, so it makes sense that I would like something like Vegemite. Um, oh, I also like Scotch. Um, so yeah, these things. Yeah, I, yeah, I like the good shit. So um, I can understand why the Bud Light drinkers wouldn't like something like Vegemite. Um, and then what else? Uh, there's really cool flora and fauna here. Um, one of the things I noticed when I moved to Australia was, uh, the, the flora, it was just like, even, even in places where, you know, shit's been torn down and they replanted stuff like 20, 30 years ago, whatever, it still looks pretty primeval and it looks pretty old and like, it just, it's just a very different feeling here. But how are you with Australian spiders? I don't have a problem with spiders. I like them actually. So um, I've actually, um, because the wife is 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 vegan, um, uh, I, I trap and I basically trap and remove um, dangerous spiders. Other spiders, I'm like, yeah, you can be my roommate. I don't care. Um, so most spiders just get to live. If we if I see them, I'm like, yeah, you're fine. But if it's something that's viciously venomous, um, you know, I'm like, all right, you get to move outside. Um, the wife used to want to kill spiders and stuff like that, but now even she's like, oh, okay, we got to, you know, um, yeah, she's gotten to a point where um, she's like that. And then also I like snakes too. So this is, this is a great place. If you could go back and give your pre Jake Summers self one piece of advice, knowing what you know now, what would that piece of advice be? Set a career path. Like we talked about earlier, set a career path, um, save your money. Um, Set clearly defined goals, um, stick to them, um, stop partying so freaking much, um, all kinds of things. Uh, like I'm basically everything that happens is just a journey to become who you are now. And that's great because um, I, I do like who I am now. 
Um, at the same time, I would like myself just as much if I had a lot of money now too, um, or if, or if my if I had allowed my career to pan out in a different way than I allowed it to, um, instead of of going nuts like I did. Um, so yeah, I would. I don't know that I would listen to the advice I was giving myself, um, because I was pretty stupid back then. But um, but yeah, that'd be the advice I would give. Whether I would listen to it or not, I have no idea. Have you managed to master the Australian accent yet? Uh, oh, that's heap sick, mate. Fucking a right. Um, no, I have not. It's so fucking hard, actually. Sorry, pardon my. Um, I can do that ochreish thing, but like just daily or basic conversational Australian accent is so hard. Um, and people and Australians are like, why is it so difficult? I'm like, first of all, you guys make sounds nobody else in the world makes. Um, second of all, every one of you sounds different than the than the guy next to you. Like your accent is so different and you live in the same city and you were born and raised in the same city, but you men sound extremely different in their accents than women. They have different inflections for things they do. Um, I did. Oh, what is it? Home and no. Oh, nay. <laughs> I'm getting home. I like I, nay, I like I it's there's just such weird shit. Like it's so hard at the same time. Like it's a great accent. Love y'all. Sorry. Didn't, I'm not insulting anybody, but it's. It's a very difficult accent to master. So no, I have not. Uh, here, I'll tell you a quick story. When I first moved here, um, uh, I went to a, a party and you know, the, the C word is pretty much thrown around here as a, as a both a uh, pejorative and a, and a uh, term of endearment. And I went to this party and after a while, you know, these two blokes put their arms around, they were drunk as shit. And they were like, ah, oh, Jai, you're a mad cunt. And, um, and I was like, thanks. And then I could see that they were like, oh, this is a good thing. Um, so you can beep that out or whatever. I don't know. But anyway, um, I still like, I'm, when I say it, I'm like, eh. I've actually coined the word twant um, just so I can say, something close without so twat and and mix it together and and it doesn't sound as bad and my american friend sensibilities are not so wrecked when i say some anyway um so uh they said that to me and at the, and so i was like okay it's a term of endearment i guess so then i went to the store and i was driving and i was pulling into a parking lot and this i'd say she's about middle-aged um younger than i am now i'm 50 i'd say she was about 35, 40. She wasn't even near the crosswalk. She was just getting close, getting to it. And I'm starting to go through it. And she yells out, yeah. And I just was like, thanks. <laughs> and drove on. And I was like, oh, no, she didn't mean. Oh, OK. Yeah. All right. I, I, that was the bad one. So what is next for you? Are we going to see you on our screens again? I've been kind of talking to some people and kind of looking at some stuff. And um it's a possibility that may happen. I'm kind of doing some small auditions here and there for some stuff. Um, whether that happens or not, we'll see. Um, I did do a uh, potential pilot um, where I played Chief Anderson, which is basically like the, what's his freaking name? Uh, who is the boss in um, X-Files? Oh, I haven't seen it since the '90s, but I think it was Walter Skinner. Yeah, it was kind of like him. Um, and but he's yeah. So I was playing. I played that part uh, for this thing. Hopefully, um, they can shop that around, get it picked up by a, a Netflix or a something, um, something, some company that's not fucking around with accounts and and passwords and all that, um, and um, and get us making the show. At the same time, if it does get picked up. Um, just because I was in that thing doesn't mean that they'd want me for the thing that they buy and produce. They might be like, hey, that's great. Let's get it with everybody but that dude. That's a possibility as well. So um, we'll see. I don't know. Um, looking at it. Um, haven't really delved back into it yet, but it's a possibility. 
Jay Anthony, thank you so much for taking the time. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I really do hope we get a 2023 California Dreams reunion. Maybe something we can cover on the web show. You never know, Meg's excited. Um, please everyone follow, like, subscribe, comment, all of those fun things, because uh, we have some more web shows coming up soon. Uh, so stay tuned. But in the meantime, see you later. Oh.